Hello, beautiful people. Welcome to Inner Beauty TV. I'm your host, Nicole Michelle, founder and femininity mentor for the Inner Beauty Movement. We're all about helping women reconnect with their feminine power, their essence, their core, while simplifying the pathway to marriage. So if that seems like something that would interest you, definitely give us a follow and definitely join us in the feminine elite. We have a really, really dark topic today, and we're going to get into that in just a few seconds. I just want to say thank you to all of my supporters and commenters and shares and likers and subscribers and to all the people who have, uh, hi Elegant, how are you, sweetie? who have stopped by the channel, shown some love, shared it, participated. I appreciate you. Even if you dropped me an email or said, you know, or made a suggestion about what you think we should discuss over here. I appreciate that. I love all the feedback I do. It helps me gauge where I am in what the market is looking like, which is why we're doing this conversation today. If you're on the YouTube side, if you can hit a one in the chat, make sure my sound is good because I don't want you to miss any part of this conversation today. Just a quick one to let me know everything is good and then we're going to go forward. So welcome to those of you who are new to the channel. Uh, sorry if this is your first video on this channel. <laughs> it will be the dark market, but it is what it is. Yes, you can hear me. Awesome. So welcome to those of you who are joining me for the very first time. Thank you and welcome. We don't tend to talk about the dark market a lot, but I figured I should get this out of the way at the beginning of the year so that when I make references to the dark market, you will know what I'm referring to. Two. I told you 2024, we're going to be on some queen content, some real big girl stuff this year. Um, and get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, because today I'm going to step on a lot of toes, but it has to be on the record. It has to be on the record that you have been told this and you know this, and I want you to be fully prepared for the market because it's going to get grimy. So this conversation will get grimy. We're going to the dark side. And for those of you who are looking to elevate your game or you're thinking about marrying an executive or a man that's C-suite or he is masters of the universe or he is a blue chip kind of guy or a uh, hedge fund type of guy, then I have a mini course that is coming out pretty soon. And the wait list is available now. So you definitely want to get on that wait list. I also have the Alluring Wives course coming out. And I've decided that the Erotic Book Club will be just for wives for right now. And only, simp and only because it is something new to me. And I want to make sure that they're safe to kind of feel their way through it and feel safe that they can let their hair down for right now and really talk about married sex because that is different. Um, not too much, but it is a place where wives need to kind of let their hair down and we can get it cracking. Now, when I have the sex therapist and I have been Thank you to those of you who have sent me suggestions for sex therapists. Um, that conversation will be for single women and married women, because I do believe there's therapy that needs to be conducted for women in terms of their sexuality, helping them work through that. Not just this year is going to be a full coming fully complete. Right. And identifying your areas of opportunity, right? Some women's area of opportunity may be beauty and health and whatever, and emotional and relationship wise. And then some people's area of opportunity may be sex, right? So we want to give women a safe space to do that. And that will be held inside of the app. And um, if you, we will make provisions for people who, if you're already um, a, 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 an alluring wife, uh, student, then of course you won't have to pay, but that's down the road. That wait list is also available. And of course the finishing school is going to be better than ever. 
um, and it will be next level. And I wanted to make sure that I could really put my foot in it like no other. I wanted it to be one of the best online finishing schools ever, not just a bunch of copy and paste information from other websites. We don't do that here. We actually give you practical advice that you can put in real time. And so that waiting list is available also. And I must let you know about the Feminine Elite Society app. I don't think a lot of people know what that's about, but that's about elevating in silence, right? Elevating your life. Uh, it, it's really for women that just want to go to the next level, preppy girl type bougie type aspiring socialite they just want to go to the next level they just want to really up their game and a lot of information on the internet is just flat out just copy and paste what you've heard other people say and i put this in a place where um when you go into a room you're not a copycat you don't look like anyone else you're kind of curating not a new you, but refining you. And that's what the app is all about. You finding who you are and it has so much stuff. You can go to Google or Apple stores. We're pretty much the only branded app that I know of that you can actually get wife prep, elevate, like level up content, uh, level up content um, where you can actually uh, talk about um just anything, positive affirmations, Bible scriptures, um, galas and things, because we're coming up on gala season in a month or so. So those of you who are really, really ready to get out there and attract uh, the best men from the best families, that season is coming up now. So um, the app is the most excellent place to be. And those ladies know I do not hold back. There's no gatekeeping on the app. So that's the place to do that. So, all right. But uh, today we're talking about the dark dating market. Now I have indicated before that there are three types of markets, the marriage market and the dating slash sexual market. Today, we're going to talk about the, the dark dating market and why it's important for you all to recognize what it is. It's important. Um, the dating market is real weird right now. The only one that's pretty constant is the marriage market. And everybody's not ready for the marriage market. I do understand that. Here on this channel, we hyper-focus on the marriage market because that's where most of you are going to be at the time. You are ready to be married. You are ready to become a wife or you're ready to prepare to be a wife or you're kind of curious and you're leaning more towards being a wife. You're not hard hearted about marriage. You're ready to prepare to become somebody's wife, to understand men better, to understand yourself better and hone in on your femininity and how that relates to not just men, but yourself and how you show up in the world. Right. And we don't shy away from getting to know who we are while simultaneously getting to understand men better, because I don't believe in, well, I have to isolate myself just so I can understand womanhood. If that's an extreme case, <laughs> that's an extreme case is where you literally have to isolate from the masculine completely in order to understand yourself. I believe that that is in extreme cases where there's some other stuff going on with you emotionally and maybe some trauma and things like that. But I believe you can walk in true gum at the same time. You can actually learn about who you are, make yourself better. And then while at the same time learning about the opposite sex, I, I, I believe that you can walk in true gum at the same time. So with that being said, this channel will be a place where we hit on all cylinders, faith, family, and femininity. And Today, we're unveiling the dark market. And the reason why this is important, because a lot of people are moving real heavy in the dark market. And a lot of women, and I was one of them, who didn't even know about this market. I was very naive. Very, 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 very naive. I have horror stories. A couple of horror stories that I'm not going to put out there in the atmosphere. But... Um, as I look back, I know God had his hand of protection of, over me because I was very, very green and naive. And had I not, somebody was praying for me somewhere, I would have been eaten up. 
by this dark market. So it's my responsibility to make sure as many women as possible. I don't care if you're, even if you're married, you still need to hear this. The dark market is the shadowy counterpart of a legitimate marketplace, right? Um, where the usual rules don't apply, right? So the rules are not going to be the same in the dark market. Now, the dark market is going to include dark femininity. I think I've only addressed dark femininity in one video, and I think I, I've sunsetted that video. So I'm going to revisit this topic because... Whew, I'm going to say this and I'm going to stand on this 10 toes down. Most of the information, when I say most, I'm meaning like 85% of the feminine femininity content that is given to the masses on social media is there is a dark feminine undertone. And I will explain what I mean. Dark femininity refers to the use of traditionally feminine traits such as charm and allure which we love, in manipul manipulative and morally ambiguous ways. So you kind of don't understand. You, you kind of have a question like, are they Christian? Or are, they, are they really saying what they're saying? No, they can't really be saying that. And it kind of calls into question your morals and your values and your principles. It questions, what it, do you know right from wrong, right? It encompasses behaviors like using seduction as a tool for control. Remember this word because we're going to come back to seduction. Engaging in morally questionable actions and leveraging traditional gender roles for personal gain. And this is where it's going to get icky today because a lot of a lot of information about femininity is geared towards getting over on men and using traditional values the things that we talk about here and using it for personal gain so remember that we said that because we're going to come back to that this concept highlights a focus on self interest and power dynamics. Remember power dynamics. We're going to come back to that. Where emotional intelligence and appearance are used to dominate or manipulate others. Let me say that again. Where emotional intelligence and appearances are used to dominate and manipulate others. And I use others, not just men, but others, because there are women who are trying to manipulate you too. There are women that are using dark femininity to manipulate other women, right? They're either trying to convince you to hate men. They're trying to get you, yes, her too, yep. In the chat, <laughs> yes. <laughs> but she's not the only one, baby. She's not the only one. Um. Uh, they're trying to get you to just disown heterosexuality altogether. Uh, they are manipulating you into wanting to be like them. So they have a cultish like persona. Look at me. Look how successful I am. Look how pretty I am. Don't you want to be like me? True femininity when you're teaching women about femininity, the concepts of, of femininity, it should be from the place of helping them come into who they are as a woman, not conditioning them to be like you. That is like that Mother God documentary that I saw. And I want to say it was Peacock or Discovery or a HBO. It was one of them, child. Tony and I watched it. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> Mother God, honey. She called herself Mother God, and they followed her to the end of her days, okay? There's another cult. It's called MXML something. I can't remember where I saw that documentary, but it was all about this very engaging leader or leaders because it, it might be a couple, and I'm going to talk about couples too, 
Uh, for those of you who read the word of God, just go to Acts 5. You'll know exactly where I'm going with that um, because we're going to talk about those engaging couples. But uh, these people are so charismatic, the David Koresh type personalities, right? And they pull you in and you will do anything for this person. Because it's not about you becoming you, because that's how they pull you into their cult, is you are going to be better, and I have the answers to make you better. Oh, no, no, no. I don't lead you to me. I lead you to Christ. There's a difference. But when somebody says, I represent Christ, but then everything is about them, give me money, give me, it's all about me, be, be like me. That's why people are leaving the church, because they smell a rat. They're like, wait, 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 hold up, hold up, hold up. Why am I worshiping you? I'm supposed to be getting better <laughs> by being under your leadership. That's how you know you can tell them by their fruit. That's how you know you're getting better because that's how you know they're of Christ because you're getting better. So you're going to see a lot of cults arise this year. Remember I said that because we're going to come back to that. But you're going to see the centralized figure who's super beautiful, so seems to have it all. And they don't really teach you how to become who you are supposed to be, become better at who you're supposed to be. They either teach you to change who you are, or they teach you to be like them. That's hugely dangerous. That is very, very dangerous. You're supposed to be teaching women how to be better them. I never tell you how to be like me. I don't even want you to be like me, right? I, I Because I'm not perfect. I don't want you to be like me. I never tell you to be like, I want you to take the concepts that I introduced to you or remind you of, or we discuss. I want you to take that and apply it to your life so that you can be better. That's femininity, not telling you how to be and what to think. That's a cult. That's demonic. We're going to come back to that. It's a specific critical view of certain behaviors and not representative of femininity as a whole. So it will super, super hone in on sexuality, seduction, beauty, um, money. It's going to hone in on all of those things luxury. It's going to really be like super hyper-focused on one thing and not the beauty of femininity. Femininity is a woman's core, right? Femininity is part of your makeup as a woman, right? That's what you give to the world. That is your source for how you approach the world, how you view the world. It is the lens by which you view the world. So if that's warped at any way, <clears throat> and we talked about this before. If any of that is warped, your view on the world will come from that place. So if it's father, daughter scars, if it's mother, daughter scars or whatever sexual, all of these things will cause, cause a woman to look at femininity differently and use femininity as a very powerful tool to manipulate others. So when we talk about markets, we're talking about types of socializing markets. Let's talk about the first one, which is the one that we kind of focus on here on this channel a lot is marriage. So if you're not listening to this or you are uh, listening to this or watching this, we talk about the marriage market here. The marriage market is primarily focused on long-term commitments and traditional values specifically. Now, there are people who will be married that are not necessarily traditional. So, but here we kind of hyper-focus on traditional values. In this market, individuals are often seeking counterparts, or spouses for a long, a lifelong union, like they plan to get married, typically within the context of marriage. So like, that's, it's not typically, that's what we're doing here. The emphasis here is on compatibility, shared life goals, and often a mutual desire to start a family. So more often than not, they're talking about having children, starting a family. They are sharing their life goals and they are compatible. They're looking to see, are we compatible? Do we want to start a family? And we, 
you know, do we share life goals? That's how you know someone is in the marriage market. Let me say that again. This is how you know someone is in the marriage market. If you know the man is in the marriage market, he's he wants to know, are you two compatible? Do you share each other's life goals? And do you want to start a family? Now, if you're an older couple, um, does he want to merge the families? Is he family oriented? Does he get all itchy inside because you bring your children over or something like that? Or how does he feel about family, extended family and so forth and so on? That's how you know that's a man particularly <laughs> is in the marriage market. So it's going to look like the marriage market is characterized um, by being more serious. It's a more serious approach to relationships. People in this market often prioritize emotional stability. They're going to be really honing in on your temperance and how you carry yourself. Financial security. This is important. This isn't the focus, which we're going to get to in a moment, but financial security, because I am of strong belief that there is no romance without finance and shared religious or cultural values. You can't be an atheist, atheist and then I'm Pentecostal. That's not going to work out. <laughs> okay. No matter how fine you are, that's not going to work out. And cultural values. You have to respect my culture, right? Um, Catholic and some other, you, you have to respect that, right? And typically these people are going to meet in serious venues, like community events, religious gatherings, the church, professional networks, or through family and friends. This is important because people want to know, where do you meet marriage-minded people I just told you, right? So a lot of people that shun the church, you've kind of... <laughs> X'd out probably 30% of your dating pool right there to there. And I, I understand. I hear people when they say that, but just, just keep that in mind. Community events. Most of the women that I talk to and have counseled do not go to community events enough. It's not just good to just go once in a while. You need to be active in the community. People need to know who you are and see your face especially for those of you who claim you want to marry well, but you don't go anywhere. And I kind of look sideways at you if the only way you meet people is online. Uh, I don't know how successful you plan to be with that strategy. So the focus is on finding a husband who aligns with her long-term goals and values. I'm speaking from the woman's perspective, but it's the same for the man. He's looking for a wife that is going to be on his program. And she's looking for a man that has a program that she can get into. Does that make sense? Now, let's talk about the dating sexual market, because this one, this is when it starts to get muffled. And this is why in a lot of these conversations on social media, they're going to throw out <clears throat> concepts and terms from the marriage market that we use a lot, especially as traditional people, they're going to throw out terms that because paying all the bills, being a provider, those are things that traditional people we talk about, but we don't lean into that. It's just kind of like a given where we're traditional that he's a provider. We don't have to keep saying that over and over, but you're going to see and you do see where uh, when People are trying to engage on social media. They're going to use concepts that excite people, that get people talking, that get their numbers up, that get people coming in the room and being talkative and contributing to the conversation. You're going to see a lot of that, right? And you're, they're going to want to engage people and they know that talking about marriage with women engages them in a conversation. But I'm here to tell you, and I've told, told you ladies this before, that sex and dating uh, market is literally the same. So if a man tells you it's not the same, and I should have put relationship up there, sex, dating, and relationship market, it's all the same. They'll say the relationship market. They'll say the dating market. They'll say the same. It's all the same. They have gotten away from saying the sexual market, but it's the same. It's just like dating. It's just like relationship market. So what do I mean when I say the dating, the sexual market? I'm setting the tone so that you understand and contrast this against the dark market. Now, this market is more casual. It's more diverse. It's fluid. There's no set rules. It's moving targets. One day is this. The next day is that. It's very trendy, 
right? It's encompassing everything from short-term dating to long-term. So you can be in the sexual market or slash dating market forever. I call it the hookup culture, the meat market, but I'm just trying to be more PC today. <laughs> but to me, it's, it's that. Short-term dating, long-term relationships without immediate intention of marriage. So people, this might be the place where they kind of have fun and hang out for a little bit. Maybe they're in college. Maybe they are divor going through a divorce or after a long-term relationship, a breakup or something. This is where they're settled at. The majority of people are in this market. All right. And this doesn't mean that they're bad. It doesn't mean that they are bad people because they are dating. You literally have to be in the dating market for some period of time to graduate to the marriage market. Now, to even understand the marriage market. And that's why I break it up in the markets, because some women are taking advice uh, or actually implementing advice that literally keeps them in the dating market. They think that they are in the marriage market and attracting suitors that will take them seriously. And they are not, 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 not the emphasis. And please hang out to the end because I'm going to give you some words that automatically tell people that you're in the dark market. So you want to hang on to the end. The emphasis is more on personal connection, physical attraction, and enjoying the present moment. It's all about how we feel now. Casual sex. It's about fun. It's open-ended. Why put titles on this? Why make this stressful? Have fun. Notice as a professional, when a woman comes to me and she doesn't know what's going on, I automatically know it. Because the dating market is uncertain. When you're in the marriage market, one thing you do know is that we are both on the same page. When you're in the dating sex market, relationship market, you don't know from day one to day five where you are. Like you go out on a date, you have a good time. And the next thing you know, he doesn't call for 10 days. And you're like, what? We had an awesome day. I thought, I thought this was getting ready to get serious. It always keeps you in uncertainty. And this actually benefits men. <laughs> and when we start talking about the dark market, it, this is kind of gives away the dark market. So I'm going to save that for that. But uncertainty kind of applies to dark market and sexual market. Uncertainty is that that place where you, you kind of know what's going on, but the other person doesn't if you're in the dark market. But if you're in the sexual market, dating market, Everybody's unsure. Everybody, I don't know about her. I don't know about him. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Well, do you want to get married? I don't know. Do you like him? I don't know. Well, is he like, are you attracted to him? I don't know. Do you see her as a wife? I don't know. Like it's this, I don't know stage. Everything is uncertain and it's short term. Like People think that they've been dating someone for two or three years that they think that's long term. I'm here to let you know that that is not long term. That is actually short term because you're not going anywhere in time. In terms of measurements of time. Yeah. OK, that's long term. But in terms of going somewhere is very short term because one person in this connection has already determined that it's not going to go further. And that's why I say it's perpetually short term, even though it might be 15 year relationship. Honey, you are short term because it hasn't moved anywhere, which if you stay tuned to this channel, we're going to talk about understanding a man's offer. How do you know if you're in his rotation? How do you know if you're moving forward? And how do you know if you're stagnant? Because a lot of people are in relationships as we speak and they think they're moving forward. And baby, you just you're stagnant. Y'all not moving forward, baby. But and, and I'm going to do that one coming up. And then it's in the present. The sexual dating market is not going to be too far in the future. See, marriage is all about the future. What are we doing tomorrow? What are we doing next month, next year, five years from now, 10 years from now? I want to see if I can plug you in to my future. The sexual dating market, I don't know. I don't know. Do I want to add her to my future? I don't know. Do I, do I see myself with him? I don't know. It's very, very um, unsure, right? Uncertainty, right? But it's definitely the present. There's nothing about the future. Whenever I ask people, are you serious? And they don't know, I go, what's the furthest out uh, commitment you all have scheduled? 
well, next week, we're that's the furthest out. Uh, it's October. You don't have Christmas plans together, holiday plans together. Are you meeting his mom, his dad, cousin Boo Boo? What are you doing in the future? I would no, I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. So you are going to go through the holidays without meeting him? This is uh, <laughs> a firm, firm proof that this is a present. This is just the present. We're not moving forward. So let's talk about uh, the sexual market characteristics, right? It's marked by a more relaxed approach to relationships. If you ever date a guy, he's not pushing forward. He's chilling. He has no sense of urgency. He's not really asking a lot of questions about you. He's just really lackadaisical. I kind of pull back. I don't like block and delete them just yet. I just kind of pull back on him and kind of pump the brakes and kind of let him take the lead. Because when a man is showing interest in you for the marriage market, he makes it clear that he's trying to, what were the, the signs that I told you? He's looking to see if you're compatible. Do you share your, the same life goals? Do you want to start a family? So when this guy is kind of lackadaisical, he's, there's some sense of urgency. I kind of pump the brakes on pump the brakes on guys like that. There's less emphasis on long-term planning and more on mutual attractions, compatibility, and enjoying shared activities. He's all about where we're going tonight. Can I come over? It's going to be snowing. Can I come over and hang with you? Where are you going? Let's take a trip. And so you think you're moving forward because he's taking you to the seashells. You think, hey, he's taking me to Abu Dhabi. He's spending money on me. Honey, that's that's what people do in the dating market. <laughs> That's what they do. It, it, that means absolutely. Oh, he bought me an Hermes bag. Oh, he took me to the show. Oh, he took me to the best restaurant in town. And you think you've made some headway. Girl, this is what they do in the dating sexual market, relationship market. This is why they don't want titles. They don't want you to hold them down to anything. They want it to keep it fluid. Where do you meet guys? that are in the dating and the sexual market. Let's play a game. Can any ladies in the audience tell me exactly where do you get, and this is be my YouTube side. So if you want to participate in this, come on over. Ladies, whatever we say in the live chat will go away because I want you to feel free to say what's on your mind in the live chat. So on the YouTube side, Write down, yes, you got some good ones coming up, all right? <laughs> so name some places where you meet guys who are in the sexual dating relationship market primarily. Good, AE said dating apps, that's like the number one spot. Good, good job, good job. LBC, she says the club, excellent. Any more club dating apps? Yes. Any more places where you meet guys in the sexual dating market? Keep it coming. Any other places? Let's brainstorm. Okay. Any other places? Bars. Yes. Thank you. Bars. That's up there. Sports bars. OMG. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. The gym. Good one. I like how you're thinking. I like that. I like that. I like that. <laughs> Somebody said the barbecue. Yeah. <laughs> That is hilarious. The gas station. Listen, that's funny. I, <laughs> I actually met a really nice guy. He was like, he, yeah, and he was at, I met him at a gas station in Atlanta in the morning. It was like 20 degrees and I was gassing up late as usual, gassing up, <laughs> rushing. And I stopped and he was walking and I paused to allow him to open the door. And when he, and I looked and I was like, oh, whoo, he fine. And so I went and goes like, got my gas or whatever, whatever. And I was like, well, look at that. Whoo, he's fine. You know, he had the long wool coat on and the curly hair and so forth and so on. And so... <laughs> 
I start gassing up, you know, doing my little dance. Woo, as I'm gassing up because it's cold. And he walks over and he's like, hello, beautiful. I know you're in a rush. You look like it. But I just want you to write your number on the back of my card. I said, oh, oh, he fine. And he has game. I'm going to have to watch this one. So he actually called me, y'all. We actually got in a relationship. And this was before I had, I was still kind of healing from my divorce. And I really was just kind of doing the cold at the moment. I wasn't sure. I know I wanted to get married again, but I really dropped the ball on this guy. But at first I thought I dropped the ball on this guy. We had a bona fide relationship. Come to find out, I started working on my femininity and coming into who I was and really getting healing from my divorce as we're in the relationship. And I thought I dropped the ball on this guy. I really did. <laughs> and I, me and my best friend laugh about him to this day. I can't say his name because you, you all will be looking him up in Atlanta. But anyway, and we laugh about it. And I thought I dropped the ball. I was like, oh, he's so he was so fine. Y'all, he had the brown skin, the curly hair, the long wool coat, the nice shoes, the nice car. Oh, he, oh, woo. And I thought, oh, I dropped the ball on him. Come to find out, oh, he loves women that make good money. So that. <laughs> he was one of those 50, 50, bro, uh, 50, 50 men. And he loved high powered women. I wasn't high powered. Okay. I wasn't high powered. I did well, but I wasn't high powered. I'm not going to lie to you. I wasn't high powered. Um, and he, he kind of looked, he needed that. He wanted a woman that was a baller shot caller and things like that and getting to know his story. Yes. He was a 50, 50 guy. And uh, like, he wasn't going to be a bad husband. He just wasn't, uh, I, I want to say he's beta, but he wasn't a leader. I would have been the leader in the relationship. And even, even though um, I didn't, I wasn't going to be in a position to pay most of the bills. It wasn't a, it was, it would have been a requirement that I keep a job. Like it would have been in a requirement that um, we split bills and he had, there was no traditional bone in his body. Um, and it, it was just, it was a lot of other things, but in terms of him being emotionally, aware and being good. He was very, uh, I won't say selfish, but he came off like, have you heard men say they're the prize? He came off like that a little bit. Like, what are you doing for me for my birthday? It, I, I just, it threw me off because I'd never heard a man say that. And I'm like, I forgot I'm in Atlanta and a, a lot of women do that. They buy gifts for men, and I just wasn't on that kind of time. I was like, he's fine and everything, and we're vibing, but no. Uh, so when as I look back at it, as I started maturing and coming into my womanhood and healing my femininity after my divorce, I realized, oh, I didn't drop the ball. <laughs> my instincts were protecting me, and yeah, no. <laughs> he's a great guy. Like, I wonder if he's still single. He's a great guy, great catch. Looks excellent on your arm, but in terms of all of that other gooey stuff that traditional women like, that wouldn't have been him. People say you can meet, uh, uh, <laughs> but I'm just showing you that you can meet great people everywhere. And then you find out that it's not what it is. The mall, the casino, Miami, <laughs> Los Angeles, you're going to meet me. Yes. Las Vegas, Los Angeles, cruises. Somebody said throw Dallas in there. And, and, if you're saying Dallas is where you meet a lot of guys in the sexual dating market, you can thank all the Californians and the New Yorkers who moved to Dallas because that kind of saturated the space. Because now you have all of these new people convulging in one area, one space, and men just have a bunch of women. They're like, just, they have a bunch of women. Somebody said turkey hunt in Houston, Texas on club night. Oh, wow, the specifics. Girls trips. There you go. Uh, women. Yeah. He wasn't looking for a sugar mama. He was looking for a woman that he didn't have to take care of at all. And so that's why I can detect phrases when I hear them, because he was the king of those phrases. In the future, can you do a live on these DL men, especially for us in cities like Atlanta, D.C., Baltimore, etc.? 
I can, I can, I can, I can. It's it's simple. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I dedicate a whole lot. Well, not a whole lot to that, but definitely t- touch on that because it's it's some things that are super super obvious. And uh, living in Atlanta opened my eyes about deals. Um, man, in Dallas, East California, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that uh, Texas is becoming the new California, yeah. And so you're gonna have people, California energy and New York energy in one city. Good luck. And then, <laughs> good luck. It's not the Dallas of old school Dallas. I don't know what this Dallas is. Good luck. Uh, so if I was in Texas, I would move to somewhere like Hewitt, Texas. Da- uh. Waco, San Marco, San Angelo, San, and I don't know about San Antonio. Y'all said that was whack, but I would move to places like that. Hillsboro, that's kind of country, but um, move to those kind of places and see what's up, especially for your own dating apps. If you just have to be on a dating app, see what's what. Somebody said they're moving to Fort Worth. I haven't been to Fort Worth in years, so I couldn't even tell you. Ugh. I couldn't even tell you. San Antonio, I like San Antonio. Um, my uncle lived like on the same street as David Robinson back in the day. So yeah, so I like San Antonio, the parts that I saw. Uh, plus it's military people and I'm always going to clean up in military towns. Okay, so that's the sexual dating market. Um, meetings, you're going to meet them on dating platforms, social events. And when I say social events, I'm talking about the events that are low ticket, $50 to get in, $100 to get in. When I send you all places to go, I never send you to those low ticket places. Why waste your time? You don't need me to tell you to go on, go on Eventbrite and look up a $25 event. That's like, you don't need me to do that, right? You need me to tell you where to go. That's not listed. It's not advertised. You can't Google it. That's what you get me for. Bars, mutual hobbies or interests, things like that. Football games, NFL games, you will definitely find that if they're not there with their wives. Um, Sporting events. Is especially in Atlanta, that's like the hookup market. <laughs> is the Falcons games? Do you understand? Are you following me here? I just wanted to give you all kind of an example of okay, so let's get in the dark market, let's get down to the nitty gritty. Y'all ready to go to the dark side? All right, let's get it. The dark market is a more complex and controversial realm. Those of you that are on Clubhouse, hit the link at the top, baby. You don't want to miss this. The dark market is a more complex. Um, and controversial realm. It's characterized by focus on dark femininity where there's more of an element of deception and manipulation, particularly using sexual allure as a primary tool. We're going to talk about seduction, baby. This market can involve relationships where one party seeks to gain power, control, or material benefits through manipulation or deceit. Just so we're clear, this isn't just women being in a dark market. It's a lot of men in the dark market. Let me say that again. This isn't just about women in the dark market. It's a lot of men in the dark market. Some of them are famous. Some of them you hear all the time on social media. Some of them are your most popular dating advice givers. Or in the dark market. Yes, ma'am. I said that. This market can involve, let me read it again. This market can involve relationships where one party seeks to gain power, control, and material benefits through manipulation or deceit. Now, can is someone who lies to you in the dark market not necessarily? Right? Um, is someone that cheats on you, are they in the dark market? Not necessarily. Those of you on the other platforms, just hit the link at the top so we can finish and get into the dark side. We're on the dark side. So make sure if you want to catch it, hit the link at the top so we can talk. Um, Just because they may act a little fishy or do things, I'm going to tell you exactly how to recognize someone in the dark market. Just because they're grimy people doesn't mean they're in the dark market. They're just 
grimy people. That does not necessarily mean they're in the dark market for sure. The market is often underpinned by ulterior motives. You can always smell a rat. You don't know what's going on. You just know something ain't right here. You just can't put your finger on it, but you know. Now, some people in the dark market are obvious. They're, they're telling you, I'm running a scam. I'm telling you, I'm trying to get this money from this man. Uh, he's telling you, I just want I just want to turn tricks with women. Like, I just want it to be transactional. That's what it is. Like, some, some people are just out and open with it, but the majority of them, if they're super naive, if they're not naive, they will not tell you. That's the whole point. <laughs> they don't want you to believe they're in the dark market and how they're moving. Relationships may be based on power dynamics. And I'm going to break that down with one, one person using charm, 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 allure, or seduction to gain something from the other. Remember when we talked about dark femininity and I said that, dark femininity will really kind of like super focus on seduction. There you go. That's dark market all day long. Anytime you're listening to a woman teach you about femininity and it's always this super, super heavy leaning on seduction, that's dark market. I guarantee you there's an underpinning of get this money. How can I elevate my life on him, on his dime? How can I get men do the same thing? ultra masculine how can i look a certain way to pull her in what do, what are women looking like uh, uh what do women like to look at a man in a suit uh, a man that's like really buff and refined and uh and he's going to put on the aesthetic because he knows it's going to get your attention same thing seduction he's really good in bed but can't pay no bills that would be him where do you meet people in the dark market the church Social media, <laughs> dating apps, bars, <laughs> venues, your neighbor, school, your job, everywhere you can think of, everywhere. They're everywhere. They're everywhere. If you think that there's this, you think it's just a strip club. No, 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 no. That's not Avate. No, they're not just in the strip club. There's some of your favorite content creators. Some of them are your pastors. Yeah, I, I'm going there. Some of them are married people. You would never think that they would stoop this low. They're in the, they're in the dark market. And so they're usually, and, and I mean, these are obvious places, but places where there's superficial connections, nightlife scenes, places like that, those are super obvious. We know we go to Vegas. Of course, you're going to meet a lot of people in the dark market. That's no, that's no enlightenment there, but that's what's going to happen. The primary focus is gaining something from the relationship other than emotional, uh, you know, emotional companionship or anything like that, or some type of long-term relationship. It, they don't plan to keep you, right? That's the whole thing. It's all about deception. Remember, the devil convinces you that he doesn't, he tries to convince you that he doesn't exist. So these people will either ignore the dark market and act like, oh, this is something somebody made up. Oh, nobody moves like that. Yeah, they do move like that. Have you ever met a person you didn't know which way was up after you got done with them? You was like, what was that? I don't, <laughs> I, I don't, I don't, it is all about making you think it's not what it is. It is what it, what you think it is. And this could be, and they do this for reason, for certain reasons, right? For financial gain, social status, or psychological control. That's what it's about, right? It's, it's all about control and manipulation and domination, which are all demonic. Okay. All demonic, right? So how do we, how do we recognize the dark market. What is the dark market? How do we recognize it? Um, um, she says, I look for a balance between light and dark. Why do you want to be dark? What is the allure of dark femininity? Because dark femininity comes from a place of these, these are its fine points, sex, money, manipulation, transactions, 
deception, power dynamics, power, fighting for power. Can I gain control of the other person? Can I manipulate the other person? Can I dominate the other person? Why would you need dark femininity in marriage? Marriage is supposed to be a safe place for you to let your guard down. That your husband is your emotional covering and your physical covering. When traditional women say he's a provider and a protector, when we say protector, we don't just say physical protection. We mean emotional protection, which I guarantee you 99% of the women who teach about traditional values never talk about a man protecting her emotionally. And the reason why is because they don't deep down believe that a man can actually protect your emotions. That is what God mandates for a husband. For you to be able to submit to him, he's got to protect your emotions. He can't take what you in uh, confide in him with and turn on you and say, hey, yeah, you went to therapy. Ha, 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 ha. That's not making you feel safe. That's not what God's intention for us to submit to a man for. So, you know, I don't know what why a married woman would want to invest in dark femininity unless she got him using dark femininity. If she pulled him in and got him to marry her under dark femininity, then yes, she would need to keep that up. Because once he sobers up, he's going to see her for who she truly is and he's out the door. Peace out. Or if he realizes it and just says, hedges his bets and goes, you know what? It's not that bad whatever is cheaper to keep her and so forth and so on. He'll just tip out when he finds a better deal. Um, and that's what most guys will do. But in marriage, when you're truly married to a person that you truly trust and is real love, he's supposed to cover you. Protection is not just physical protection. It's emotional protection. When you cry, he's not supposed to turn your tears against you. When you are into it with someone, he's not supposed to become friends with your enemy. He's not supposed to defend your enemy, right? Nobody should be able to come between a married man and a woman. They should take each other's secrets and dirt to the grave. That's the whole point of being married is protecting each other. You're his diary and you're he's your protector, not just physical, but emotional. So why would I need to emotionally manipulate the man who is mandated by God to protect my emotions? Well, Nicole, I'm married to a man who doesn't protect my emotions. Then it sounds like you have a lot of thinking to do. You have some important decisions to make. Because I'm not teaching from a point, from a place of pain and destruction and trauma. That's evil to sit here and paint this broad brush that men are just out here to. Do you understand how so many men are tearing down emotionally because they don't have a woman that they trust enough to open up? We just talked about this. Was that last week? We talked about how to really love a man. And I just told you the way to a man's heart is to really love him. They don't know. They have, ne there are some men, that's why they're so mean and evil. And that's why they so are just like these sex fiends because they have never connected to a woman in a real solid way. They don't feel like they can let their guard down with her. They can't open up to her. So they're constantly walking around with armor. Well, it gets hot outside. The element starts to hurt. The iron starts to burn your skin. Like you want to take the armor off at some point and show people who you really are. Do you really love me? This is who I really am when I'm not in a suit and tie making like international business deals. This is who I really am. I really like watching wrestling. I really like watching old sitcoms. I really like sitting here and rubbing my feet and like chilling. I really like just being me. I really like just going to a baseball game and watching and chewing my thumb and watching my favorite baseball player hit and circle the bases. Like guys really want to let their hair down because there's only so much they can do with their homeboys. They want their wife to be able to do that. And some women will never make it to wife status. They will constantly be in the dark market and sex market because they never make it safe for a man to be him ever we were just tony and i were just listening to uh the comedian cat williams who if you're listening to this in the future <laughs> at this moment in time a video that he did an interview he did on a different youtube channel just kind of like blew all the way up like stop the internet so 
in his thing, and we're, we're looking at old videotapes of him as exes, and one of his exes, which I hope that <laughs> my husband actually does a stream about this, <coughs> excuse me, where she's just like telling the world how much money this man, this man spent on her on a shopping spree. And I'm like, one, if you hit pay dirt, why would you tell everybody else that and that kind of let him know you're not in it for me why would you put me on blast why would you expose me to the vultures when you have a man that's giving you all of those things why would you tell everybody else to oh you like you kind of like put a target on his back yeah come get this trick yeah he's he's got all this money and things like that you just basically let him know you're not there for him this is like for bragging rights you're with him for bragging rights well i can't let my guard down with her I can love her, but I, I see how she moves now. I see her ulterior motives now. She just wants to, and I, I, some people, I don't think they think that hard. I don't think they think that deep that, wait, hold up. This is my man. He's, he's spoiling me and I'm putting it on the social media for everybody to see. I, and then you wonder why the feds are kicking in your door asking you, where did he put the money? Stupid. Because your big mouth. Now you understand why men with money don't mess with women that don't have money. Now you understand that now. Do you understand that now? Because women cannot shut up. You cannot shut up. Everything is on blast. <laughs> That's why I created an app. <laughs> Some things should not be discussed in the public square. Some people will learn this when they're 75. And then some people will finally get it. <laughs> sex, money, manipulation, transactions, deception, power dynamics. How do you know if somebody's in the uh in in the sexual market? Woo. Well, deception and manipulation, that's kind of a strong indicator. Using sex to trap. Sex is a trap. Sex is manipulation. Um femininity is manipulation femininity let me use femininity to finesse you to get your guard down let me find a sucker who doesn't seem like he gets out of the house much he doesn't seem like he's used to a beautiful woman let me find him and let me use some seduction tips that i know other women may not be privy to let me try that on him and then kind of get my way and have my way with him okay um, using religious religion to seduce people. There is, and this isn't anything new what I'm talking about. You're going to see couples rising up that are Christian, that are super financially charged. Give me money, pay me, give me money, invest towards the ministry is never given back to the community. You'll see that. You're going to see a rise of couples that look good and people that want to be married and people that want um, true leadership will look at them as these examples of Christian uh, Christian Christianity and how to, and you're going to find out they're just as fake as a $3 bill. You're going to find out these people are not what they say they are. You're going to find that out. Um, and these, these so-called Christian couples, because they sell, why don't you be like me, be like me, be like me. That's part of the dark market. The dark market just isn't about sex and relationships, y'all. This is like real sinister. This is real sinister. There was, uh, back in my hometown years ago, there was this couple, Christian couple. Everybody loved this couple. Good looking couple. He was fine. She was pretty. Everybody worshiped them as like, oh my God, they're like couple goals, relationship and marriage goals. And then come to find out they're doing, um, how can I put this? <laughs> I'm probably already demonetized. So let me just say it. Um, Come to find out, it was like this huge article about them. And come to find out that it wasn't a sex ring, but it was like they would have these huge sex orgy parties at their house. Like this was a pastor and his wife. You would never expect them to be rocking out like that. You people that follow, you got to do your homework on these people. I grew up in... uh church pentecostal church and 
people did background checks on people. They're doing a background check on me as we speak so that I can get a position in the national church. They're doing this as we speak. They don't play. <laughs> now, some people still slide through and mess up. That's one thing. But coming in the door, they're, they're asking who you people, who you related to, what church did you go to, who can speak on your behalf, who can speak that can corroborate what you're telling us. Oh, they go deep and dive. How long have you been at this address? What do you do here? What do you do there? What do you do for a living? Oh, and, 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 and they go deep. They go deep down. It's not just about can you maintain the position? Can you look good in position? They deep dive on you. You. So a lot of these people that just pop up and then they don't have a connection with any particular church or formation. Those are the special people you need to because then what they'll do is it's a it's a, it's a connection of preachers. So it'll be a preacher in Dallas, one in New York, uh, two in Chicago, one in L.A., one in Houston. Right. And they will just travel to each other's churches. It's a network. They all know what they're doing. It's a network. And so you think that because Pastor Bootenshoe in New York is having them and they're doing this thing and they did a video and they did it. So you think that that proves that this person is legit. No, 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 no. You got to go back in time to childhood. Who are they connected to? What church did they grow up in? Who, who can speak for this person? Who gave them the right to pick up a mic and speak to God's people? You all have got to start doing your homework on these people that claim they are men and women of God. There I said it. So when stuff come out, y'all heard it here. This is important when you're speaking to God's people that you are on point. That speak that goes for me and everybody else. When you get in front of God's people, you better be on point. And if you make a mistake, own it. Look, I made a mistake. I'm and don't get up here with this haughty spirit. Yeah, I don't know why you calling me out. I don't need to address it because I'm innocent. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you, you need to address, look, I hear what people are saying and I know what it is and it will come out that I'm innocent. So pray for me as we go through this challenge together, but I know I'm innocent and God will have my back and you will see that. That's a man of God. Not, uh, I don't have to answer to this. Like you above reproach. Like nobody can question you. Sir, who are you? God is no respect the persons. We all have to answer for what we do. No matter how much money you have, what your name is and who you for. I don't care how many people go to your church. You got to answer to this. What is this? And why are we hearing this about you of all people? Please explain this to me. Explain this to me. I don't have to explain anything. No. Yeah. Look. God has my back. God knows the truth and it will come out that I'm innocent. And I know what you've been hearing is not true. I promise you it's not true. I have proof that it's not true. God will vindicate me because I'm innocent. That's enough for me. But when you come out talking about, no, no, nobody can question me. I don't have to answer. I don't have to deal with this. All with my sermon. Excuse me? <laughs> huh? <laughs> It's thousands of people follow you. They worship. They kind of worship. They look up to you. You're their spiritual father. Hey, look, hey, hey, it's going to come out in the wash. You're going to see that I'm innocent. You're going to see all of these lies be exposed about me. You're going to see it. You're going to see it for yourself. And I just need to let you know. To trust me, I am who I say I am. Every time I said what I said, it's the truth. That's why people leave the church. Because when you take something to them, you go, I don't, I don't have to deal. I don't have to answer that. Who are you to ask me anything? I'm Bishop so-and-so. I'm Sister so-and-so. I'm First Lady so-and-so. And people are like, wait, hold up. So I can be held accountable, but you can't? <laughs> no, that's not how God's family works. That's not the, how the kingdom of God works. We are responsible for how people take what we say on the mic, what we say in front of his people. So dark market is not just sex, but you're going to see an influx of people coming up, talking these crazy terms and, and, and applying it to Christianity so that it's more marketable. It's part of the dark market. F flat out witchcraft. They just flat out witchcraft. This is not even 
they're not even hiding it anymore. Just flat out witchcraft. Obviously, that's dark market. If you need a spell to get a man to call you back, baby, that's dark market. That's okay. Own that. Sex work, obviously. That goes without saying. Jezebel spirit, this 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 spirit to manipulate another person, get that person to do what you want them to do instead of them having free will. Even God gives us free will. So you're trying to control what this man thinks and eats and and or he's trying to control you because it's a lot of that, too. <laughs> it's a lot of that, too. Divination. Goes without saying, Christian hypergamy. This is a new term that I heard. Somebody sent this to me. I'm like, what? Yes, occults. Yeah, you're going to see a lot of occults creeping up in the church because one, a lot of these people with the mics are not even Christian, but you all will find that out. Christian hypergamy. I don't know where this term, term came for. It's not, it's not biblically based. I don't know why people... It's like the it's like Christianity is just one of them religions where you can just kind of it's very respected. So you can just kind of throw some stuff in there and people will think you're legit. They'll think because you're associated with Christianity and because you said it, it must be true. I'm here. I don't know what Christian a Christian uh, hypergamy is. I don't I don't know what that means, because if you're supposed to trust God to find the, and, and, and put the man that he wants for you, then you're not trusting him if you take it in your hands to go find a man that you feel can, can that can pay your bills a certain way. That's not trusting God. And that's actually going against the word of God. So that right there tells you that's phony. You must trust God to see. I, and I'm talking to Christian women right here, right now. I'm only talking to Christian women, this part right here. Um, you must trust God to send you who God has ordained for you. He knows you. God knows you and he will send you the best man for you. So if you're traditional, you don't have to second guess God. Well, I got to make sure God sends me a man that can buy me a, a house behind that uh, 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 gated fence. That's not trusting God and that's not biblical. You need to go back and study to show, your, so, uh, show yourself approved. That's none of that is biblical. I didn't go to God and go, God, he needs to make this. He needs to do this. He, I just said, God, you know me. You're the best matchmaker because you made me. I don't, I, I'm bad at this, obviously. I got, I'm, I'm zero and one. So therefore I need you. And boom, he sent me <laughs> a, the most wonderful man. I, and, and, and I'm traditional. I didn't have to go sit at a bar. I didn't have to get out of my square uh, do anything funny or anything strange for change to attract him. I didn't have to scream from the mountaintop. I'm traditional. I ain't want a provider and a protector. I didn't have to do any of that. You all have heard me. Some of you have listened to me for years. Did I ever scream from the mountain? I'm traditional. I want a provider. I never did that. I never did that. <clears throat> but I happened to attract one. You know why? Because I trusted God. I said, wait, I'm putting it in your hands. You, you gave me this to do. I have people looking up to me, people listening to me. And if that is your will for me to stay single, then you need to help me. Cause I get horny. I want a man. I want companionship. I want to talk to somebody. Look, I want to, <laughs> you know, I'm just talking to God. Look, 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 you know me. Like, come on God, you know, what's up? Like, come on, we've been through a lot. You like you made me, so you know what's up. Come on now. Every Friday we go through this. Come on. Like, I'm talking to God, like, like we're homies. Like, God, please come on. This is getting rough here. <laughs> and God did what he does. God, come on, do what you do, God. Come on. You know, like, come on. I'm looking at my clock. Like, but I trust you. I trust you. I trust you teaching women that you're a Christian, but you can not consult God with the most important decision of your life. You can skip that part of trusting him and go out here and get you a man with money. Now, when you get that man with money and God will bless it, but it's not ordained, but he will bless you. And he starts to do X, Y, and Z on you because that's not who God had for you. You have no one but to blame but yourself. None. Okay. Father-daughter scars. That's another uh, 
a time where people um, are in the dark market. When uh, they have father daughter scars, they haven't healed. They are hurting. And they project that pain onto men that are romantically attracted to them. So if they don't trust men because daddy did something, they project that. If they were violated when they were younger, they project that onto men. And what you will notice in the dark market is a lot of women have been violated. Okay. And so they use sex and manipulation to kind of get the one up on a man. Hey, look at me. Look at me. Look how sexy I am. You can't touch though. You can't touch. That is subconsciously saying I was violated before, but you won't get a chance to do that again. I get to control how you come into my presence, how you, uh, uh, uh you know, how we interact. I get control. It's, Sort of like on the back end saying, look, I get to control you. You don't get, yeah, you can look in my breast. Yeah, you see my nipples through. It's, it's obvious, but hey, you can't touch. You better not touch, you nasty, horny guy. Yeah, that's someone that's in pain. Somebody violated her, and this is her way of grabbing back her power. So she's in the dark market and you're going to see her dressing extra provocative and extra provocative photos and extra provocative videos and things like that, because that is how she can release that. She needs that power. That's how she can grab her power. So when he approaches her going, hey, beautiful, how you, hey, beautiful, you just a horny dog. You da 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 She gets to have sex on her terms. Remember how, have you ever heard women are constantly, um, they really, Really, really heavy on that. A woman gets to control her body. She gets to control her narrative. She gets to give it up when she wants to. And da 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 da. da. That's the heavy emphasis on that because that's the way for her to get her power back. She's been violated somewhere, sometime, and that's her way of getting her power back. So that's how she's going to lean into that. She's in the dark market. She's in the dark market. She thinks she's sex market in the dating market. And she wonders why guys sober up and not call her back or they get real fidgety because they recognize something's really dark about her and they can't put their finger on it. It's just something's real weird. Like she knows she's sexy. She comes out of the house. Of course, people are going to look, people are going to stare because you have your nip nips out. And then when people make a comment about, ah, you horny dog, ah, 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 give me your money though. Wait, huh? So, <laughs> right, I'm not supposed to comment on the fact that you're half naked, but I'm supposed to pay for everything. Got it. That is, I get to control you. I get to call the shots for a change. That's dark market. You're going to see a lot of that. You see that in a lot of content creators and the content that they get over on him before he gets over on you. That, that's all that is, is, is some father and daughter scars that are so deep. That is, is, I don't think they'll ever get away with it. And, and the women that listen to them are literally wasting time. This is time that those women could be working on themselves, becoming better women and healing themselves. Some of them need Jesus and therapy. I'm, I'm raising my hand for Jesus and therapy. I have both. Okay. I don't play. Okay. Jesus and therapy. I am not too shy to say, I go talk to somebody. I'm a very emotional person. I get, hey, let me go talk to somebody to unpack my subconscious mind. What is going on with Nicole? I need to understand Nicole so that I can give love to people from a genuine place, not from hurt. I never want to do that. So I want to get to know Nicole and get and heal herself, heal thyself before I start talking to other people, right? So I'm in, I'm in favor of Jesus and therapy, but there are some people that will never see true happiness and true love because they are so stuck and stagnant and father da father daughter wounds it just will never they they will get and tell you oh i had a wonderful relationship with my daddy but you don't understand the stuff that you say actually gives it away <laughs> we can tell people who grew up with their fathers there's certain things we don't say and they and and there's certain things certain ways we move and and we can give it away and it's not a judgment. I'm just wanting you all to understand that this market is super, super dangerous. It's destructive. It's death. It's death. It's death. There's no growth in the dark market. None. There's no sun. And where there's no light, 
There's no growth. There's no truth. It's all deception. It's all lies. These women will tell you, yeah, yeah, go on out there and get in that sex market. Uh, well, sex workers should be, um, it's not sex working when you uh, get a man to pay for stuff and you don't finagle whether you have sex or not is up to you. And they'll convince you, hey, you could be a housewife and you can have a side business finessing men and you never have to have sex with them. I have had some people literally approach me, serious. When they said it, hey, you could be a housewife and run a side business and get money from other men. Now, you don't have to sleep with them, girl. You just get money from them. And, and I was, you know how Macaulay Culkin has his hands on his face in Home Alone? I was like this. I'm like, what? Huh? <laughs> Why? I have everything I need here. Why would I? Even... And uh and so the people that pull them into this convince them, girl, you ain't have to have sex with that man. Girl, you can just, just get his money. Excuse me. I don't, huh? I don't know too many men that just give money away without sex. That's, I told you, this market is all about lies and deception. You're going to get these women out on these dates with these random men. And put them in a position to be forced. That's what you set them up to do. Or are they going to get some wacko jacko person who exterminates them? Is that what you want? But that this is the kind of market we're in, you all. This is the kind of market that we're in. Older women misleading younger younger women. I uh, there is no shortage of people online. Um, who are misleading younger women. Yeah, girl, use what you got to get, get, okay, fine. Tell me what happens to me when I'm 55 and I'm diagnosed with cancer and I have nobody. Tell me, tell me how that works. How, which one can I call? There was an episode in Sex in the City. And for those of you who haven't seen it in a while, it was a ep it was an episode with Samantha. Samantha was a very sexually charged, attractive woman, and she's just you know if she likes them, she's having sex with them, right? And there was a time she came down with a cold, and she could barely move. She needed help. She had to call one of her girlfriends to come over and help her because every guy she called was like, yeah, so I'm coming over tonight. She's like, no, I can't do anything. Can you bring me some cough syrup? Can you bring me some chicken noodle soup? And they were like, what? Huh? Oh, no, I'm busy. I got things to do. She might've called two or three people and she finally got the hint. A lot of women, they go through that when they get older. And that's why when they get older, they start talking about marriage because they see the writing on the wall. They can't get out here and attract really high powered, high stakes relationships like they used to. So it's like, woo, the time is winding up, baby. Now, all of those women that they misled on that path are now going to follow behind her and to lead them into destruction. You don't say, hey, hey, I understand, you know, um, you want to get out there and have fun. This is how you do it and be safe. No, they say, yeah, do it, do it, do it, do it. They never say there's a cutoff or they talk so horrible about marriage and church and family and faith. And so by this time, the woman, the young women's minds are so twisted against marriage and against uh, um, um, anything substantive. They're like, oh, I don't, oh, uh, marriage. Oh, uh, uh, can we talk about femininity without men? I'm like, is this a girl on girl fest here? Like, why don't we want to talk about men? I don't ever want to be in a spot where we don't talk about men. I'm with women and we never, like, we can talk about everything. We can talk about children, motherhood, money, things like that. But I've never been in a circle where we just didn't come back to men. <laughs> I, 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 we're going to an island, a secluded, sexy beach with a bunch of women. But we don't want to talk about men. Um, no, thank you. I'm good. What? So we're going to a sexy beach on the other side of the world with a bunch of attractive women and we're not going to talk about. Okay. Um, huh. Mm, interesting. Um, but anyway, <laughs> I just, wait, uh, mm, when, when I go to Fiji, 
I, I want to be on top of my husband at night. I don't, I don't, I, maybe some other women, they do their thing, but me, I, I don't want to go to a sexy beach with a bunch of women. Why, why do I want to do that? I want some muscles holding me at night. What? <laughs> to each his own. Oh, we can talk about femininity on Zoom. I don't need to go to Fiji with a bunch of women to talk about nothing but femininity. We can give me the code to log in on Zoom and we can talk about femininity till our faces are blue. I do not want to talk, get on a sexy beach. Horny is all get out looking at a bunch of women. No, thank you. Dark market, dark market, dark market. It's just under the guise of femininity and girl stuff. It's girl stuff. It's girl stuff. Well, we can have girl stuff on Zoom. And when I log off, I'm lay up with my husband. What are we doing? <laughs> we can talk about girl stuff till you blow in the face. Text me, girl. Tell me what's on your mind. Call me. Let's do girl chat. Let's do brunch. Uh, island on a hat on the other side of the world with just women. No, thank you. Yes, no, I'm good on that. So I spent ten thousand plus dollars to come sit with a bunch of women. Something we could have did on Zoom. Oh, to each his own. To each his own. But then, so the older women are getting uh, older. The older women are getting older, <laughs> and and so now they start to realize. Wait, 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 wait. What if I get diagnosed with cancer or Hodgkin's disease or something, and I can't move or I can't. You know, a lot of them don't have medical insurance. They don't think about these things when they're out here in these streets in this dark market. And so they start looking around, which sucker can I get to marry me? Eeny, meeny, miny, mo, catch a sucker by his toe. Uh, oh, oh, there he is. Sucker, sucker. Hey, baby. Hi. How are you? Like, uh, <laughs> and the next thing you know, she thinks she's reeling them in. They never tell the younger women whole is not life there is no retirement plan for whores like what do we do when we turn 55 60 years old when the men on the websites are looking for hot young tender women they're not looking for somebody 60 because they know exactly what you're looking for you're looking for a sucker to cash you out and make your life uh, better and help you uh heal all your pain from all the years you ran the streets and 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 went from this man to this man and this man and this man, and this man. that's the dark market men are kind of catching on to the dark market just so you know they may not call it the dark market but they are most certainly most certainly on to transactions there are women that are stupid enough to get on social media and, and go it's five hundred dollars to talk to me <laughs> like these young like these young women i don't i don't get i don't know women under 40 a different breed i don't i don't know i don't know what would possess you to get on social media and tell a man it's $500 just to talk to me. So you're literally saying you're transactional. That's the dark market. That's the dark market. She, I mean, she's not using manipulation whatsoever. She's no deception. She's transactional, though. That's how you know she's in the dark market. You're going to have men who, who will say, you saw that? <laughs> you will have men who say, hey, let's just dark market. They need to come on out of that dark market. Come on out. There will be some men who operate in the dark market, especially if they're in their dog phase, their dating phase, they hold their whole phase, like men have whole phases too. They have their whole phase, like they just broke up with their wife or whatever. And they're in this phase where they're like, I don't care if I want to sleep with her. And she says, no, I'll just pay her. Like you have guys like that. They're in the dark market. They need to come out. Some will never come out. Some love being in a dark market because they are intrigued by those women, but they don't really tell you what comes along with dealing with those women. Financial psychosis, a woman that has been traumatized by money or the lack thereof. She's had people lower money over her head and not give her money. She's had to go without. She's had a very traumatic life, very poverty stricken life. She's had to go without Watch those people, especially when it comes to money, especially when they're over people as in leaders or business people. This is why you need to do your homework on people before you become business parts, partners with them and before you condone people. Because if they've had financial uh, traumas in the past, 
hopefully they're not sticky fingers and thieves and hopefully they're not running scams and fraud. Just make sure that that's not what they're doing. Just, just make sure, just double check. You're going to see an influx of people doing that. I'm just letting you know, but financial psychosis can cause a woman to put her body out there in exchange for money, um, manipulate men for money. It, uh, to use her body to obtain a higher status over a man or to gain power over a man using her body and her sexuality, right? And it's because she wants something from him. It's specifically money because money to her gives her power. And you're going to see a lot of women using that. I told you 90% of the content out here about femininity and relationships is I'm, it's dark market. It's it's dark market. Everything luxury this and trophy wife that, and I'm I'm going to give you some some clues here in just a second, just that make it so obvious they're in the dark market. But, and I'm not saying this to be mean. I'm saying it to you all who listen to me. That look, if you are, if you recognize any of these behaviors and maybe you've done it, stop. Because it's actually keeping you from the marriage market, the beautiful marriage market. Have you ever listened to couples who are not in the dark market talk about their marriage and their courtship phase and how they, you know, got to know each other? And uh, you would never experience that ever, ever. It would never be you. And some women are okay with that. They just want the manipulation. What can he give me? What can he do for me? You're going to see a lot of that. They hate order and rules. You ever heard a woman who goes in on order? She goes in on rules. She hates rules. She hates confinement. She She's rebellious about structure. How can you have a man? <laughs> How can you want a traditional man and you hate structure? That's what traditionalism is. It is a traditional structure. It is adhering to traditional, traditional gender roles. And believe it or not, you have women who will literally say, uh, I don't like rules. I don't, I don't want to deal with rules. I, I do things my way. That's all well and good. It just won't appeal to traditional men. Just, I mean, you are more than welcome to do you. And if that's working, so be it, but it's not working for traditional men. And that's why they don't seal the deal because they're like, I, unpredictability is not cute. Interesting and fun is, is cute. But unpredictability where, okay, we're arguing all the time. You're disagreeable. Um, you don't know how to get along with people. Everything is a push-pull with you. Um, it's all about me and, and my truth. And, okay, this is the family's truth. So you're going to put your personal truth over the family, not traditional. I'm not saying that you have to lose yourself and your identity and your individualism in a traditional structure, but it is a, it's, it's a melting pot. Everybody goes into the pot and contributes, like in terms of emotional value and, 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 and adding value to the family unit. And when one person sticks out and says, look, this is about me. I need self-care. I need this. I need that. It's all about me. That's problematic. And no traditional man wants that because he's out giving of himself. Maybe he works in the elements. Maybe he's like doing all these deal, international deals, whatever he's doing to earn money, to earn resources, to take care of the family and do what he does. That's giving. He doesn't go to work and say, oh, well, I don't feel like paying the bills this month. I just, I just don't. It's just all about me this month. You're going to go, what? Are you serious right now? So why would he marry a woman who's literally, it's my truth. I, it's about me. I need time. I, uh, and she's like going with the wind, every which way the wind blows. That's not going to work for a traditional man. And for most other men, it won't work. They're like, wait, hold up. Huh? <laughs> what? But I'm supposed to make pay these bills on every first of the month, like clockwork. But you get to be all over the place. How does that work? How does that work? Okay. Um, uh, evil people who are in the dark market will pull us away from everything that gives us strength. Okay. You will notice a person, a man or a woman is in the dark market. When you tell a person, this is my strength and they tear that down. You know, I believe in Jesus Christ and I go to church and this, 
gives me fulfillment. This completes me. This is my faith. And they tear that down. Oh, you go to church. Oh, you believe in this. Oh, that's that's one evil person. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, how can you talk to me about womanhood and sisterhood and femininity and all these things? But then when I tell you this is what this is my source of strength and you tear that down, I have to second guess everything that you say. Uh, when you say, look, um, um, I what's another one? Um, I'm a good girl. I've heard a lot of people criticizing that term. And, and then I have to look and I'm like, OK, wait, why would any person? who's actually good and have good intentions, criticize a term that literally is just describing a woman that has good integrity. It's just a woman that has high character and good integrity. A person that's in the dark market. There is no reason to criticize a woman who says, look, I'm a good girl. My intentions are... Because if you're in the dark market, you look at being a good girl as a doormat. You look at being a good girl as someone who takes abuse, who's like this, wears this kick me sign where people could just walk all over you. That's how you look at being a good girl. Because you're in, you're looking at being a good girl, a good person through the eyes of the dark market. Phineas and Shaw, thank you so much. Older ladies used to be long-term planners. It is a lost art. It is all about the right now these days. That is so very well put. I couldn't have said it better myself. That's exactly what it's about. Older women, you kind of knew, they kind of knew what they were going to be doing. Uh, I saw this senior living place here, out, uh, I want to say outside of Cincinnati, and it was super, super nice. I said, oh, these senior living places are, ooh, wow. And I know what it is. They tr they're trying to entice people and not make people feel uh, depressed because some of these, when I was growing up, the oldest, the senior living places look like someplace you go to die. Uh, <laughs> these places look like you still had a vibrant, active social life. I was like, oh, it was in an affluent neighborhood. And I was like, Oh, okay. Wow. Um, <laughs> get people having people depressed about getting older, but now these senior living places, especially if they're in um affluent neighborhoods, it's like on point, right? And so, um, and so these older women are out here just like the younger women and misleading them. It's one thing to say, hey, I'm going to help you with your womanhood and things like that. It's another one to encourage the worst behavior out of younger women, knowing that that's a dead end. You know that's a dead end. You know that this world is grimier than it was when you were her age. You know this. You know that these men are not, when you put her in the dark market, you know these men don't play fair. You know it's not a fair playing field. You know it's not. And you put her there telling her, yeah, go do you, express yourself, do that. But you don't tell her, oh, she's just out there and she thinks she can figure it out on her own. Right? Um, but um, misuse Holy Scripture. I've seen this a lot too on social media. I've definitely seen this on IG, using Scripture to validate why we want to date men with money. Um, I dark market. I just I I it floors me every time I see it. I'm like dark market, dark market, dark market. When you trust God, uh, and and I said it before, it it, it no 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 no. That's that's Christian witchcraft, if that's even a, a concept. It's a lot of people in the church or associated with Christianity that are not really Christians and they're using witchcraft, mind control techniques on you, Jedi mind tricks, especially on women who want to be married, especially on women that, especially during the winter months, you start nesting, you're in the house, you start feeling lonely. And so they start, go, oh, you know, quoting scriptures and telling you, all of these things, and you think that they're on the up and up because, because there's quoting scriptures. Absolutely not. Everybody quoting scriptures is not what they think they are. Everybody needs to study the word and be real on the word, including myself. Double check me, double check my teachings, double check my word. She said X, Y, and Z. Let me double check that. I, I, I stand corrected. If I say anything wrong, double check me. I come here every Tuesday. You can come and say, Nicole, I did X, Y, Z, and you're wrong. And I'll tell you why I'm right. 
And I will tell you, this is the book. This is what I read. This is this is the article. This is the book. This is this. This is that. I don't run from people. Every Tuesday, I'm here on the mic, and you can talk to me one on one. I do not run from people. You know why? Because I'm telling the truth. People that are uh, questionable are going to hide. They're going to not. They're going to make sure you can't track them down. They're going to make sure you don't know who they are. They're going to want to make sure that you're ambiguous. They want to make sure that they have the one up on you. I'm up. I'm. Um, I'm up here. Even though you don't know what I look like, where I live, my real name. You don't know anything about me, but I am the authority. I get to tell you how you're wrong. Well, nobody can say how you look. Like there are some people online that are um that people don't know what the general public doesn't know what they look like but other people have seen them in real life that's different there are people that nobody's seen who they are and they are the authority and they can tell you what you're doing wrong and how you need to fix your life yeah how do i know you're not lying how do i how can i trust you how can i trust someone i can't look them in the eye nobody has said i met this person and uh, nobody can say nothing no what i'm saying is that a lot of stuff out here is dark market and it's underpinned with a lot of negativity this is why they can't expose themselves because once you come to truth you're gonna go why have i been listening to this person this long why have i been why why and i know why things aren't working and things aren't adding up I, this is this is making sense this is you're gonna know you're going to know. You're going to know. You're going to know. And and they know that. So let's talk about words that, words that um, kind of give away the dark market. Let's go here for a second. Problematic words and behaviors that indicate dark market concepts. They kind of, kind of give themselves away. And I shouldn't be putting this out here because people will just recalibrate like they always do. And they'll stop saying those things. But you know now how to recognize it. Because I don't think that they can help it. Um, and this is not a target on anything. This is for you to recognize, one, when people are lying to you. Two, when stuff is associated with negativity. Where there's it's this heavy... I don't know. I just feel in my spirit in the last two years, last two years specifically, it's been a heavy emphasis on saying one thing and meaning another. It's been a real heavy emphasis on that. And I think that's why Cat Williams interview. For those of you who didn't watch it, go to Club Shay Shay, Cat Williams, and, and I, I've sat through it two or three times. That's why I always look a side eye at people that criticize truth tellers. But anyway. Uh, and he said, it's only one side. It's God's side and it's the other side. And I always look weird at people who question people who come to the table with truth, who lay out who lay out their hands and say, hey, this is true. When you're telling the truth, you don't need to hide. You don't need to be undercover. You don't need to. Uh, uh, and people will say, you know, why did he have to say that? Because the truth needs to be said. That's why. Why do I say the things that I say? Because the truth needs to be said. People that tell the truth will never be that popular. People that tell the truth will be disliked. They will be lied on. They will be attacked. I've had all the above. That people don't want the truth. That's the whole point of the dark market is the truth has to be in the back somewhere. Okay. When identifying languages that uh, may indicate a woman is involved in dark femininity or the dark dating market, it's important to approach this with caution and understanding that these are merely potential indicators and not definite proof of such involvement, but we do want to call some attention to it. Manipulative, manipulative men and women, possibly a part of the dark market. Okay, words that suggest focusing on controlling or influencing others for personal gain. It's one thing when you're leading people and helping them become their best, but you're leading them to for your own personal gain. 
problematic. Seduction, heavy, heavy emphasis on seduction. Language that heavily emphasizes sexual allure or attractiveness as a primary tool for interactions. If I want something from a man, I seduce him. If I want to talk to a man, I seduce him. When I want to get his attention, I seduce him. When I'm just chilling with him, I'm seducing. Everything is seduction 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 she can't just be herself and talk very good indication that she is dark market these machiavellian um references cunning strategic using deceptive tactics that could kind of look underhanded dark market power seeking terms that indicate a desire for dominance and control in relationships and social settings it's one thing you're trying to control the zoom meeting because you're the one that con is conducting the zoom meeting and you're trying to maintain order that's one thing right but it's another thing where you're trying to control the social dynamics of every interaction. You're you're speaking to a bunch of people and you need to be the top dog. Um, have you ever talked to a man? He's got to be the top dog. He's got to be right. He's got to be. I'm not saying he's in the dark market, but that's kind of a characteristic of someone who's in dark, a dark market. Right. Power seeking. Jezebelian attitude. Materialistic. Super, super emphasis on materialistic. I cannot stress this enough. Luxury, hypergamy, luxury living. I have to have a certain lifestyle. All of these things indicate dark market. They may not even know it. You're listening to people, talking to people. You might have used some of these terms. If it's a heavy emphasis on materialistic, you're in the dark market, baby, and you may not know it. You think you're moving in the marriage market and you wonder why men are acting funny with you, not calling you back. Um, it's, it has nothing to do with they don't want to be traditional. A lot of it is they they think that you look at them like a sucker and they're like, does she know that I know what she's doing? Does she know that I understand what she's doing? Because everything out of your mouth is materialistic. I got to have this. I got to have that. Uh, he has to make this kind of much money. I have to live here. I have this. And it's never any emphasis on the things that matter. A strong focus on acquiring wealth, status, material possessions, possibly at the expense of others. A lot of that's financial psychosis. You don't want to be poor again. Got it. But um, lying to other people, um, trying to gain material things and possessions at the cost of others is dark market. Okay. Cynical. Whew. This one right here. I mean, after this, I actually need to go get a massage because this message is very, very, very heavy, but it needed to be said. And that's why I'm going to feel very relieved once this is, once this is out. Cynical, very cynical. Have you ever met women who are cynical about men? Just cynical. Everything that comes out of their mouth. I got to remind you that you're black. I got to remind you that you're Latina. I got to remind you that you're a woman. I got to remind you. Oh, I got to remind you that the decks are stacked against you. I have to remind you about racism. I have to remind you. Like you can't just have a conversation with them without them reminding you that you're at a disadvantage. How about we just have a conversation? Huh? Can we just talk without you having to say something negative and add that in the pot? And now everybody that's talking has to just, yeah, it's exhausting. It's like, for real, like, huh. Sometimes you can just let the obvious just sit there and we can just kind of like enjoy each other. It just, uh, can we just talk? Can you just make commentary without reminding me that I'm at a disadvantage? Like, I'm not saying put us in Delulu land where we just have, but can you just talk? Why do you have to say, well, you got to remind you that you're a black woman and things are different. And I just, can you just give me the information? Like, <laughs> I have to remind you that you're a white woman and the white man has all the power. And can you just tell me the facts of the situation? Why, why? Why? I have to remind you that because you have a college degree, you're dating. Can you, uh, can you just talk? Can, uh, like, oh, uh, I just click off the video. I'm just like, oh, uh, I just, I just, I find something else to talk about. I've worked with people like that. 
uh, do you know people like that? It's just like everybody's having a good day. And you could have a like this one person. We would have a meeting. Meeting would be going good. And some people were like, whoo, I got out of that meeting without getting called out. Amen. Cool. Let's go back to our desk. This one person will say something to put everybody on blast. Oh, yeah. I just want to say, like, it is super, super difficult to, you know, the court calendar gets stuck. And I had to call Fulton County and I said such and such. And I talked to Susie from down the hall and she said, and now Susie's holding her head down. And then I talked to Nicole. I'm holding my head down. And then I talked to uh, Max and he said, and now everybody's like, oh my God, will she just shut up? I work with somebody like that. Like, <laughs> These people do this because they are super, super cynical. They are unhappy. Um, this she went out on vacation. She went on this luxury vacation because her relative was a celebrity. She comes back to the office instead of her telling us about the luxury vacation because where she went was this exotic locale. And we were like, please fill us in. She wanted to talk about the bed bugs. She focused all on the negative. And I'm like, wow, what a way to start my day. <laughs> you couldn't tell me about the beaches. You couldn't tell me about the nice flight you had. You couldn't anything, anything. She focused on the mosquitoes, the bed bugs, their bad service. Like, did anything go well for you? It was all right. It was just, have you ever met somebody? Everything bothers them. Like, it's you think it's something good and they, they can find negativity in everything. You can go to the best restaurant in town and they will go. It was all right. Like, I didn't like the. <sighs> can you imagine a man trying to be with a woman like that? Egocentric. Words that suggest self-centeredness or prioritizing personal needs and desires. Be careful with this self-love. Be careful with that, that it doesn't become egocentric. Chameleon-like. Descriptions of changing one's personality or appearance to suit different situations or manipulative outcomes. I've seen women go into spaces and say, I'm all for women. I'm all for, and then go into male dominated spaces and throw women all under. Yeah, women are going to be single forever. And da 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 da. If someone asks you a direct question and that's the answer, that's different. But when you just start volunteering, yeah, women need to do this and women need to do that. And yeah, feminists, yeah, it's because they're feminists and da 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 da. da. And it's like, <sighs> really? Was that even necessary? Like, what it is, is it's to cover up what they're doing. It has nothing to do with other women. It is all about covering up what they're doing so that when they go to those spaces, because they're in dark market, they've got to throw off the scent from them. So they throw the scent back on other women, which is you and other women. Yeah, these married women. Yeah, they get on the, yeah, they're unhappy. Da, 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 but I know how to please my man. I know how to do X, Y, and Z. See, they have to throw the scent off of them because they don't want their potential targets. Because when you're in the dark market, that's how you refer to men as targets. You don't want your potential targets to know that you're in there trying to sniff out dummies. So you have to throw off the scent by throwing off other women. And if you can do that effectively, what you do is you build trust and rapport with the super simps that think that you are uh, genuine. And a lot of women have done this good. Like they think that, right? Deflection. Yes. Yes. If they are really, really dark, they deflect. Absolutely. Phineas. Absolutely. Like that you, you can tell it. Well, no, the average person can't tell. The average person cannot tell. Speak since we're on the dark market. If you all have some time and you're not reading books like I've instructed you all to do and you just have some extra time, go watch the TV show, The Traders. It's on Peacock. And when I tell you the head games, <laughs> the head game, this, I didn't know the show won an Emmy. I had never heard of the show. And um, I just came across it and I said, wait, 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 wait. I had to stop. And and the, that show Traders, it shows you a lot into how people, how easily people can lie to you 
It's a lot of people in the dark market and they're willing to go to the dark market to benefit themselves quickly. So these people will go in these spaces and chameleon like so if i can call or accuse her of being a, a chameleon that'll take the scent off me because i'm really the chameleon you have a lot of that going on and please ladies don't do this don't you all do this but this is part of that behavior is part of the dark market entitlement a sense of deserving certain treatments or benefits without corresponding responsibility. I, I'm supposed to get a million dollar house in a gated community because I'm who I am. Well, huh? What does that mean? <laughs> what, huh? What does that mean exactly? But you have women that talk like this. Don't talk like that. That's dark market. Exploitative. Um, indicating a willingness to take advantage of others for personal benefit. There are people that will gladly tell, I will sell you up the river. If it meant I'm going to get some more money. They will sell their husbands up the river if it meant that they would get more money. You've seen those, those, sh those shows where you're like, did the wife uh, offer her husband? Tune in at 9 p.m. as we talk about the story. You've watched 2020 is one of my favorite shows over the years um because i like dateline and 2020 and it's uh, people always get perplexed when it's the wife that offs the husband because they never think and and i'm just like when you start dissecting her behavior all of her behavior was dark femininity she snapped at him all the time she's you know erratic behavior she's sneaky like it, it gave it all away a lot of women operate that. You're giving yourself away. You're in the dark market. These are words that are problematic. We're going to get through this really, really quick. Manifestation. Dark market. Dark market. Manifestation. Especially if you're Christian, you shouldn't even be saying that. You trust God and he blesses you and he gives it to you. There is no ma manifesting what? I don't, I don't, I don't know. Um... Not manifestation when it comes to relationship, chakras, crystals, all of these other, all of these other things. Um, that is going to be an indication that she's in the dark market. And I should do a breakdown of how men categorize women, but I'm not going to do that in public. I'm going to do that in private because the women that are serious about marriage, you should know where you fit. I'm not going to put this in the atmosphere to let people know. This is going to be for, and I just thought about that. So let me write that down. Cat, how men categorize you. And sometimes you don't even know that you're being categorized in that particular. They have, it's, it's several, it's several categories, how they, how they, they list you. And if you fit in that, like I told you, men don't test you, they read you. And if I'll give you one. Free spirit. That's that's an easy one. Free spirit. You're free spirit woman. You think that that is uh and, and that's a very good personality trait to have if you're with other women or your friends or you're with your you know people can enjoy your company because you're not so uh, uh I don't know you you're free you're fluid you're um you're not so in a box and black and white like you can move around and you know you're not so rigid that's the word i was looking for and so that's a really good attribute to have but when we're talking about in terms of traditional marriage and we're talking about marriage period men are going to find that problematic okay so if he there are certain characteristics that you give off if you're free spirit and men will look for that they're not testing you you think men are testing they haven't they just read you and he goes up ah, my read comes up a free spirit because she did X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z. No, thank you. I'm out. Oh, but she is sexy. So let me sleep with her and I'm out. Oh, wait, she's a good cook. So let me have sex with her and get a good meal. And then I'm out. Because I, I, this is, I, you know, and these women will have, um, they will have serious relationships occasionally. They will have serious relationships, but Every now and then, or a lot, these guys will come in and go. They will come and go. And if a woman can't figure this out, that, hey, I need to find a man's personality that meshes with a free spirit, she's going to become jaded and upset, right? So I'm, I'm going to do that down the road.
sometimes because I need to do that. Christian hypergamy. That's another one. Dark market. Dark market. Kept girlfriend. Dark market. What about that is, is like legit above board, right? I, I'm pretty. I want to be taken care of. So let me move in with this guy. He pays all the bills. Well, they don't discuss. Yeah, you do have to have sex with him. And yeah, eventually he does want you to do something around the house. Yeah, eventually he does want you to add value to his life. Even though he doesn't outwardly say, I want you to, to learn how to cook and get along with the staff and understand. He may not say all those things. He implies it. Like he he feels like I shouldn't have to say certain things. When a man reaches a certain level of maturity and success, he feels like the women in his life should just know how to conduct themselves with him. And if they don't, he's perplexed. And yeah, dark market, kept girlfriend, no. Um, highly seductive, dark market, off, off the rip, dark market. Women are naturally feminine, naturally graceful, naturally beguiling, and naturally charming. So when we go above, uh, over and uh, over and above that to be overly seductive, it raises men's eyebrows. And I don't know why women haven't picked up on this. Um, and one of the, the most famous vixens in human history, Marilyn Monroe, taught us this lesson, and we still haven't caught this lesson. She taught us, yes, I'm beautiful. Yes, I'm rich. Yes, people know me, and I'm talented in all of the above. But she couldn't keep a man. All her relationships are toxic, except the first one. All of her relationships are toxic. And you wonder, how can someone so beautiful and have seduction down pat, can't keep a man. The reason why she can't keep a man is because nobody wants to keep a highly seductive woman. You don't have to do that. You're already beautiful. Now, it's fun. It's fun taming a woman. It's fun conquering a woman that's highly seductive and she gets you turned on and she's sashaying around the, the, uh, sashaying around the office and she's sashaying in front of you and she's sashaying, sashaying. That is so fun for a man to conquer you. And once he conquers you, he goes, well, that was fun. On to the next. And this is the Marilyn Monroe effect. I actually did a video about this years ago. That video has been sunsetted. I might bring that one back up and talk about that again. The Marilyn Monroe, the Marilyn Monroe effect. She literally taught us that that stuff gets you nowhere. And yet we idolize her. And... Anytime a woman says her idol is Marilyn Monroe, dark femininity. She may not even know she's in dark femininity. That's why I'm doing this now. So that you know, because her, she, a lot of her characters bled over into real life because Marilyn Monroe was emotionally messed up. She had father, daughter scars, mama scars. She had a lot of going on emotionally so she was very insecure and she relied on seduction you don't need that you don't need that baby you don't you're already curvy you're already beautiful you're already attractive you don't need that so when me and c you going overboard with seduction they naturally immediately sense insecurity immediately and i don't think a lot of women pick up on that and that's why a lot of women are super, super sexy and beautiful and single. Um, let's see. Blatant rich craft. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I, I okay. Um, I'm a goddess. Okay. I'm a princess. Princess, not so much. I think that's what I think that one's innocent. It's just father and daughter scars there, but I, I don't think that's dark market. Goddesses, on the other hand, dark market because goddesses are deities. They want to be lionized as uh, as a deity. They want to be above. They want to be reverenced as someone to be worshipped. Demonic. Um, kept wife. This is a, a, a term I'm hearing over and over and over. Traditional women are not kept wives. We're just wives. It's like a given that he's a provider and a protector. And he to, uh, it's, it's a given. We don't need to say kept. Do you understand what kept means? It's what courtesans used to call themselves and what um, women call themselves, women of the night. Women of the night, women who do transactions, sex workers, okay? Sex workers use the term kept wife. 
sex workers turned wives. They used to be in the game. Now they've gotten out of the game. They become wives. They call themselves kept wives. You're not a kept wife. Did you come out of the game? Did you come off the streets to marry a man? Okay. Well, then you're not a kept wife. You're just a wife. Now you can say you're a treasured wife, spoiled wife, baby wife, pampered wife. Trophy wife is problematic. You better be a trophy wife if you use that term. And I mean, marrying a sucker who doesn't know any better doesn't classify for as being a trophy. Trophy wife is on some Melania Trump level trophy. Someone of that magnitude chooses you not because he's a sucker, not because he doesn't have two eyes. He's, a, he's not very social. He's a nerd. He doesn't get out much. That doesn't count. That's just you nerd hunting and you found you a sucker. I'm talking about Melania Trump who has, you know her, you know her past, you know Melania, she gets it in. I love how she dresses. Baby girl kills it. Um, And she marries this Masters of the Universe. Now that is a trophy wife. All right. So, you know. um, but that's problematic. And when women say, I want to be a kept wife, problematic, especially for Christian conservative men, Christian traditional men, they're out the door like Speedy Gonzalez. Ding! Like, uh-uh, uh-uh. She was cute, but no. Concubines, yes, yes, absolutely. We're not concubines. We're not concubines. That's another thing about dark market. Um. People in the dark market will convince you. Well, just being a traditional wife is just like being um, um, you're paying. He's paying for sex. They will reduce the beauty of traditional structure family down to <laughs> he's paying for sex. Wait a minute. So a man and a woman get married to raise a family is the same as somebody walking the street, collecting money to have sex with some stranger. That's what you that's dark market. That's how they look at the world. You've had, I've had grown men say, what's the difference between a wife and a prostitute? What? Did you just say, who raised you? Wolves? <laughs> what? How did that ever? Cut? What, what did your mom do? Was your mom a wife? I automatically know your mom wasn't a wife. The moment you uttered that, I know your mom was something else, but she wasn't a wife. What in the world would possess you to even ask a question like that? What's the difference between a prostitute and a wife? <laughs> oh, God. And you ask that with your whole, men ask me that with their whole chest. And I'm like, I look at the profile and I go, I, I, of course he asked that question. I'm looking at his profile. It's disgusting. Right? Ladies, pay attention. If a man says some crap like, what's the difference between a sex worker and a wife? You already know his mom wasn't upstanding woman. She couldn't have been. Any man that has a half decent mother is not. Uh, she had to be a wife. Uh, it, it, if she wasn't a wife and she wasn't half decent, he's gonna say something like that. Ladies, do your homework. Somebody said mad tattoos, sage burning tarot cards. I you need your reading. I need your reading. Uh, yeah. Dark one. Super cynical of men. This is a big one. Super cynical of men. Everything about men is negative. Um, dark market. And some of them are now coming out and saying, yeah, you know, I like women. Um, yeah, I, I'm not for marriage. Yeah, I'm against Christianity. Yeah, I'm, and it's all coming out because they can't help it. The cover's busted. People are on to that. And they're like, oh, 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 okay. So she's in the dark market, right? It's a lot of guys like that too. It's not just women. It's guys like that too. Um, somebody says Marilyn Monroe was programmed to be a siren until her death. Very unfortunate. Well, I don't know if she was programmed to do it. I do know that the studios needed her to do that. And every woman kind of, uh, fashion themselves to be somewhat like her, like Jane Mansfield. I mean, you can't be Marilyn. So her career can never measure up to Marilyn because they're both blonde and busty. But, um, uh, but yeah, I mean, that's what it was. It was Marilyn and everybody else. So I don't know if that's programming, but I do know she was, she had a lot of 
trauma growing up bless her heart she had a lot of trauma it's amazing she made it to where she did and i i just think she was surrounded by a lot of predatory men how hollywood is very predatory and she was surrounded by a lot of predators and i think that contributed to the demise of the great marilyn monroe i might revisit the marilyn monroe effect one day down the road but that, that that is something when when women tell me that they're vixens or I worship Marilyn Monroe or it's one thing to be careful, ladies. It's one thing to be inspired by a woman, but it's another thing to try to take on her negative parts of her uh, persona, her dark feminine traits and inherit those things. That's going to be dangerous for you. Okay. Metaphysics, astrophysics, all of that stuff at, in, in relationships and social market, is, it, it's a dead giveaway. Does that make sense? Any questions? Any questions? Any questions? I know that was sudden, but any questions? <laughs> Somebody said she was considered overweight for her time. I wouldn't doubt it. I, I've heard that before. I've heard that before. They say she was a size 12. I don't see a 12, but hey. Um, but ladies, I just want you to understand what market you're in, especially if you're trying to be a wife. Remember, if you want to be on the wait list for a luring wife course, the elite finishing school, and you want to be the first to know about the executive wife mini course, definitely get on the wait list. I am making sure I put some really, really good content in there for you about being executive wives or a C-suite, C-level, um, C-suite, um, high-powered white-collar men. That's definitely something because a lot of women don't know what comes with that world. So we're going to do it, break it down to you. And also you can get on the app. Uh, but if you want to get on the wait list, go to www.mrsnicolemichelle.com. Thanks for watching. And for those of you listening, thank you for listening. But anybody have any questions? Somebody said numerology, good luck charms, <laughs> feng shui. It's a lot of things that indicate dark market. I mean, I, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot of things that indicate dark market. You just make sure that you are not sending the wrong signal. Because if you're in the marriage market, Everything after the first 15 minutes or of first 30 minutes of this conversation, you shouldn't be doing, period. Yeah, it, when you're in marriage and you say, well, well, Miss Nicole, how do I get to the marriage market without dating? I did this so that you understood and make sure you're not in a dark market, that you're not sending signals that you're in the dark market because no man will see you as a wife, just so you were clear. No man. Right. When he sobers up after that, after that hot, steamy sex session that you had, he's going to see it for what it is. And he could never see you as a wife. Right. Some fools will marry a woman in the dark market and then they will be online complaining that women are horrible and so forth and so on. That's because you marry somebody out of the dark market. Go somewhere and heal. I don't want to hear it. You chose that. Deal with it. Um, but I want women to understand the difference between marriage market, sex market, and dark market. And when you're in the marriage market, how do you get to it without going? To, you, well, you should never be in the dark market. You should never be in the dark market. And unfortunately, most women, a lot of women are in the dark market. A lot, especially on social media, especially people giving out content. A lot of them are in the dark market. I'm just going to be honest with you. They are. 90% of the content that is put in the atmosphere is in the dark market. I'm, I'm not going to even lie to you. All right. So, but in the dating market, you make sure that you're not operating with hookup culture vibes. You're not um, moving around like you're in the hookup culture. It's not something that needs to be said. It's just how you carry yourself. Your energy is very much like a wife, an executive wife course. I'm just so looking forward to releasing that. Oh, MG, I just, I cannot wait. Um, but Dating market 
is very, very quick for traditional women. We don't date forever. It's just not a point. <laughs> I mean, if we notice that it's going round and round and round, we up out of jail. We're gone. Period. So that's why we're always in the marriage market. Because when men see us, they see wife. And they go, eh. Have you ever had a real grimy dude curve you? It's not because he's not attracted to you or he doesn't like you. It's because he sees the goodness in you. He sees the grime in himself. He feels like he's not good enough for you. He feels like he's going to dirty you up, which is a good thing. And he voids you. I've had men, a couple of guys dodge me. And I was like, why did he dodge me? And a lot of times it has nothing to do with you. A lot of times it is because the guy sees that, here comes that, that term again, he sees a good girl, not somebody he can beat up on, not somebody abused, no, because that's what people in the dark market want you to believe, that being a good woman with high character and high, char high, character and high um, moral value and high and principles um, it, they dirty up the term good girl. Like, how can you dirty up the term good girl unless you're not a good girl? You know what I mean? So he sees a good girl when he sees you. He literally sees a woman with good character, high character and high integrity. And he goes, you know what? I'm a grimy dude, but I'm not going to mess over her. Not her. I'm not going to do that. I could, but I'm not going to do that. Right. And that is the position you want to be in. That's the position you want to be in. Now, a lot of men don't have integrity like that, but there are some men that will curve you because you, you're just a good person. You're a good woman and he doesn't want to ruin you because he knows he will, <laughs> right? So make sure if you're in the marriage market, operate with these things you see on the screen, courtship, intentional about the uh, what you want from the relationship, God involved, put God involved in the relationship, uh, from the beginning and clarity. If you're unsure, chances are you're in the other two markets, not the marriage market. Okay. And when you're in the marriage market, the future is a conversation. It's not something that you run away from. And so I knew that he was going to be my husband. We were talking about the future pretty early on right? Shared values and life goals. Okay. Shared values and life goals. We were on the same page about a lot of things. We saw life very similar. And so we kind of matched on a lot of things and that's how, you know, that's your husband, right? And here's another thing that I just want to put out in the atmosphere about church. Um, the dark market. I, I always can pinpoint a woman that's operating in from her dark femininity and dark market when she takes jabs at the church for no reason. For uh, and and this is I, I never understood that because I was telling my husband the other day about all of the social skills that I developed just by going to church. I'm not. I'm just aside from school and aside from society, the social skills that I develop. There's no other place on the planet where a three-year-old or four-year-old will be shoved a microphone in their face and told to speak to a congregation of people. That's the church. You get up there on Easter and Christmas and you say your speech. Jesus is risen. Yay! Little Timmy, little Lisa said our speech. Yay! Now you have experience speaking to a crowd and you're not even five years old. Then when you become a teenager, what do you do? You're in the youth department. You're in the youth choir. You're on the youth committee. And what? You're making friends with other people. You're socializing. So you have friends outside of school. So if school people don't like you, so what? You have people that like you at church. If people at church don't like you, the people at school like you. And if you both places like you, you're a very popular guy or girl. That was the church. You develop social skills. And because you went to church, your parents, well, hey, you haven't been to church in a month. What's going on? If your parents were abusive, they got called out. There's no other place on the planet people love to call people out. That's the church. That was the church. I don't know what churches you, you all go to, but the churches I went to, Honey, whatever. I don't, I don't, 
how they just let things go in these churches. Now, I don't I don't recognize that the churches I grew up in. We saw you when you got born. We saw you when you graduated from high school. Then you went to college. We went to, we we announced that you were graduating from college. And then when you got married, we all came to your wedding and gave you gifts. And then when you had your first baby, we bought baby gifts for your baby. That was the church. And when people criticize the church, I'm laughing because that guarantee you, guarantee you they themselves are socially awkward. I guarantee you. The most outgoing, lovable people that I know came out of the church. Some of the best singers I know came out of the church. Some of the best keyboardists that have ever touched a keyboard came out of the church. Some of the best drummers. One of Beyonce's drummers is straight out of church and God of Christ. Come on, let's let's be real. Like, I don't I don't understand how people criticize an institution that has produced a lot of outgoing people. I can tell you didn't get out of the house but to go to school because you can't socialize with other people. But when they attack an institution, it's like attacking everything. When somebody died in your family, somebody came into your house and helped your hand, uh, uh, was with your family when you bereaved. You didn't have to search around and pay a fee or search around for the funeral home. You knew that your relative, your loved one had a church home where they could have the service. That was un, uh, you knew that. You knew that. That was the church. I always look sideways at people that criticize the church. You don't know what you're talking about. Oh, these women are kept single because of the church. What church? What church are you talking about? You must be talking about the churches from the 80s. The churches now, these women look like they left the club uh, Saturday. Night. They look like I don't, a lot of them. Some of the most beautiful women on the planet are in the church. Have you seen these? some of these gospel stars and their groupies? No, because you haven't been to church recently. <laughs> That's why you're saying what you say. So when people criticize church women, I'm like, you don't go to church often, do you? Some of the coldest looking women in the world are in the church, baby. Come on now. I don't I don't know what you maybe you haven't been to church recently. <laughs> you, you haven't been. So I, I look at that and I go, let me consider the source. Because that is pure dark femininity. Anytime someone is trying to pull you away from your faith. I'm talking to somebody right now. Somebody is on the edge and you're listening to a lot of stuff. You're listening to stuff in society, on social media, in your family. And you're getting all this pressure to just check out and do and 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 not turn off the voices that pour into you and i'm telling you if this place is a source of your strength why on earth would you walk away from it the people that it's a sinister move to get you to turn away from your power source I always look weird at people who try to unplug you from your power source and plug into them i never want you to plug into me as a power source if anything, I want to lead you to Christ, not to me. It's not about me. It's about you. It's always about you. These videos are about you, not Nicole, not how fabulous my life is. This is about you and you getting the life you deserve, you want. I just had one lady send me a message. She tied the knot over the Thanksgiving, I want to say Thanksgiving weekend, Look, we are producing marriages over here. So it's not about me. She married who she needed. Ivana married who she needed. Melissa married who she needed. And all of the other women that have come through my program married who they needed, not somebody like me. I didn't tell them who to marry. I said, who works for you? I'm going to help you get who works for you. This is not about me. This is about you and anyone who help makes you, including a man, especially a man that tries to encourage you or force you or shame you into unplugging from your power source, whether that's your father, your mother, your church, your faith. If he is encouraging you to pull away from your power source and only rely on him as a power source, he's going to abuse you every day and Every, every day and twice on Sunday. Abusive people love to disconnect you from your power source. Any friends that don't want you to be friends with other people, disconnect. Hold up. 
Now, being friends with your enemy is something different. But being friends with other people, because <laughs> I've had people that say, claim to love me and love my enemies, enemies at the same time. That's crazy. Um, even Jesus didn't put up with that. Um, but being friends with you, but then they don't want you to be friends with other people, problematic, disconnect. This is uh this is a narcissist in the waiting. You gotta know uh these people, and I'm gonna help you all the best way I can identify horrible sources of strength. They're not sources of strength, there's there's there to zap your strength. All right. That includes a man, a woman, children, anybody. It could be anybody. Anybody encouraging you to unplug from your power source is problematic. She says, hi, Lauren. She says, I'm almost 41, single, no kids. Would like to be married with a family, but also considering becoming a foster mom in a big city. Would love your thoughts and advice. Well, um, one thing, are you considering becoming a foster mom because you are getting close to giving up on becoming a wife and mother? Or have you always wanted to be a foster mom? That is something I want you to really ask your ask yourself and really be honest with yourself. Why am I doing this? Am I giving up on love? Am I giving up on love? Uh, you know, what what what's going on? I really want you to do that. And I think being a foster mom is a beautiful thing that you are extending your home, opening up your home to um, children who need a home and things like that. But I would love to have a conversation with you before you do that. I would love to have a conversation with you so we can really see where you are because sometimes when we make drastic moves, and I've learned this <laughs> the hard way, <laughs> sometimes, be you know, we need to consult God before we make drastic moves. Okay. You're adopted yourself. I, I, I understand. I understand. Say less. But, um, and God bless you. Like, that is the sweetest thing. That is the sweetest thing. God will continue to bless you just for, just for even considering that. Like, seriously. Um, but one of the things I've learned, dear heart, is that we get impatient and we jump the gun and we're like right there on the edge of a blessing. And because we take things into our own hands, God is like, what did she just do? I was getting ready to bless her. I've had this happen to me a couple of times where I'm waiting on God and then I jump and people do that with marriage. They're waiting on God. And then they go, I want a wealthy man and I want to make sure money's not an issue. So I know I trust God, but on this, um, I'm just going to do things my way. No, baby, no, baby, no, baby, no, baby. Got to trust him. So that's why I would love to have a conversation with you and, and see where you are because everybody's in a different situation in, in, in a different place, a different mindset. And 41 is definitely not over. I don't know what city you're in. So that's a factor. And you want to be a mother. So it's a lot of things going on. It could be a physical thing. Um, I don't know. So, and that is just such a beautiful thing. Like, like virtual hugs to you for wanting to uh, have a family with people who don't have a family. That is amazing. So God is going to bless you for that alone. But I would love to have a conversation with you to see where you are before you make this heavy decision. Okay. Yeah, your your maternal instincts are kicking in. Totally get it. Totally get it. Totally get it. But um, a lot of, you live in D.C. From D.C. You live in Baltimore. Got it. Oh, yeah. I'm pretty sure there's plenty of foster kids. Sometimes having foster children, you kind of need that second parent to help you with that, help you with the emotional part of part of that. Grew up in foster care into middle class single woman. Just treat them 
uh, you would your own child. And remember, all children are expensive. Good advice, good advice, good advice, good advice, good advice. But yeah, man, that is beautiful. Ladies, I want you to just like pause before you make these huge, mis uh, not mistakes, not mistakes, but huge decisions, life altering decisions. I want you to just pause before you do that and pray and seek God's face before you do that. And then after you do that, come talk to me as your mentor so we can see if there's another alternative because marriage might be on the table. You just never know. Just never know. And I never want to assume just from one question. I don't know. So I don't want to assume. I want to like give you the best rounded advice. And raising children is, is a team effort. <laughs> it's a village effort. Okay. And you would in essence be signing up to be a single mother. And we just want to make sure that we're not doing this because we're feeling some type of way that everything hasn't, you know, wrapped up the way we wanted it to wrap up. We want to do it because we want to do it. We're okay. If other things don't happen, are we okay? Because once we bring those, those little hearts into our home, there's no going back, right? There's no going back. So, all right. A heavy topic, heavy discussion y'all, but, uh, I think it needed to be said, and this will be a reference video. So when I mention the dark market in upcoming conversations, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And because no one else is talking about dark market, you should know, you should be able to recognize off the rip who is dark market, whether they're male or female, you should know. I'm going to do a test one day, just random, do a test. So you all, to see if you all recognize dark market. And can you di differentiate between marriage market, sex and dating market, and the dark market? And I'm going to put some images up there and have you guess and see, did I do my job right? Did you all get this concept down right? And no shade to anybody, but this had to be said. And if you're in the dark market, you don't know it. Hey, you have time to fix it and do better. If you are in the dark market and proud to be in the dark market, just own it. Just own it. Just own it. And let the chips fall where they may. I'm not against women. I'm for women who want to do the right thing. So if that makes me against you, then uh, if that means you're not doing the right thing. But if you are a woman and it's working out for you and you're happy, hey, I'm not against it. I just want women that want to be married to be empowered. Thank you to the best mods on the app social uh, on social media on youtube thank you so so very much i know this time slot is challenging but i didn't know if this would help the bottom line if this time slot is working for everybody or should i go back to one o'clock so it's up to you guys um you ladies what you want to do for those of you who really want traditional content follow me on tiktok follow me on ig my stories is really where it's at, y'all. Y'all really got to go there. And um, because I put some preppy girl stuff in there and kind of kind of like the stuff in uh, the app. I kind of put that on the my, my stories and check out my post on IG and join the conversations on Facebook. All right. Facebook is more of a mixed audience, but IG is really... It's a really good close tribe there. I'm starting to like it. And hopefully a lot of them come over here. And then TikTok is just, I, it's just whatever. <laughs> uh, I'm usually on other people's lives on TikTok. So that's what that is. And um, so I'm looking forward to you. And definitely join the newsletter. If you don't do anything else, get on the newsletter. Because I'm working hard to put some really, really game-changing content out there that that's not even offered on the market and i know people uh, nobody can brag about this nobody and i and i do that purposely because i know what your needs are and i know that a lot of you are going to be doing some really big things this year and so i want you to be prepared right you are you're on my facebook awesome 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 so thank you very much for ladies for joining me don't forget to check out mrs nicole .com. join the newsletter and get on the wait list for those courses if you're interested 
Also, if you have a little free time, go watch The Traders. I know it's a lot of TV, but I'm telling you, it's kind of good. It's almost as good as Squid Game, almost, but it's good. So I love you. Thank you so, so very much. Thanks to my mods. Thanks to you all for hanging out with me. Remember, I love you and Jesus Christ loves you. And until the next time, keep the faith, everybody. Peace.